The 2021 Texas legislative session will be unlike any other, with the coronavirus pandemic expected to alter every aspect of lawmaking in the Capitol. We surveyed some of the Texas Tribune's reporters and editors about what they'd be watching come January 12th when the legislature gavels in. I think we're going to see a constrained agenda. I think we're going to see a smaller number of bills passed. And I would anticipate that we have in the 20 weeks, you know, an outbreak here or there, as we've had in any other large gathering you know, for the last nine months. They're not gonna get all of the work done in 140 days that they would without a pandemic and without restrictions on the use of the capital. There's a million things to talk about. You know, until we have a vaccine available for everybody, there's gonna be, you know, some elbowing over who's in line and who's first and who's second. Uh, what's an essential business? Should the governor have the power to close hair salons, restaurants, things like that? The recession is clearly something they have to deal with, everything from unemployment benefits to economic development. You've got a bunch of issues that came out of the election itself, from voting by mail to extended early voting, all kinds of things around that. And if they get all of that done and they can mess around with smaller stuff, um, some of that smaller stuff is actually rather big, but the question is whether they're going to have enough time. Education policy is a priority every session, but it too will look different in 2021, given the recession and the resulting budget shortfall. Last session, the legislature uh, passed a, a really enormous multi-billion dollar school finance law that changed a lot of the ways that they um, allocated money to school districts across the state. And a lot of lawmakers have said they're going to prioritize keeping as much of that intact as possible, but it's definitely going to be a, a battle over money this session. Um, the other thing I'm, I'm looking for uh, this session is how are the ways that the pandemic has changed education, um, especially with you know millions of students still learning remotely and virtually from home? How are um, people advocating for some of those things to just stay in the formulas and, and stay in law. Hundreds of protesters gathered in Dallas and Fort Worth in response to the deaths of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, both black Americans recently killed by police officers. The death of George Floyd sparked protest and a renewed focus on social justice and law enforcement. You know, policing is number one. You have issues on police funding um, that have drawn a lot of attention. You also have police reform issues. These are kind of competing uh, policies that are being put out already. You see bills, you have the George Floyd Act, and you're starting to see some bills that, you know, Governor Abbott has been pretty vocal about coming after Austin for cutting its police department funding. There's been a bill by State Representative Matt Kraus who's kind of prohibiting cutting public safety budgets um, in cities. So I think those two things are going to be top of mind throughout the session. There's been a push for several years to decriminalize low-level possession of marijuana. There's been pushes to make that a non-jailable offense or a civil offense. And now there's a bigger push to make marijuana legal. Given the economy that we're in, there's a big argument for legalization in terms of bringing in more revenue. I think that'll be an interesting fight as it goes through. The use of money generated from so-called sin taxes will be under consideration as lawmakers look to close a projected multi-billion dollar deficit. The budget is something that everybody should pay attention to because at the end of the day, it affects every single Texan one way or the other. The Texas Comptroller has projected billions of dollars in shortfalls to the current budget. I think that conversations about legalizing marijuana, gambling, um, finding new streams of revenue just to, again, grapple with these shortfalls uh, are going to be on the table uh, this legislative session. We're just going to have to see what avenue, what avenues state lawmakers decide to go down. Are they using accounting tricks? Are they cutting? Are they making cuts to, to state agency budgets? Are they finding new revenue streams? Uh, or is it going to be a mix of all three? We're, we're just going to have to see. The budget constraints come as millions of Texans continue to struggle financially, face the threat of eviction, and lack access to quality health care. What I'm expecting to see is this tension between the, the need to cut budgets across the state and the, the increase of overall needs from, from low-income and even mid-income populations due to the health crisis and the financial crisis that the pandemic has brought us. It's really a public policy classic question, you know. 
crisis comes, uh, not only people like regular citizens are suffering, but also the budgets of uh, local governments, uh, state governments and the federal government are, are, are more strained. It's going to be a tricky one to try to balance those things between uh, people that are more concerned about budgets and debt and people that will be advocating for um, communities in need during this session. In addition to the budget, the other item lawmakers must tackle in the 2021 session is redistricting. You know, every 10 years we do a census. We count the people, we count heads, we figure out where they are. And then we decide how much representation each state is entitled to in Congress. That's called reapportionment. And after that's done, each state has to divide itself by the number of seats. So in Texas, we're going to have roughly 30 million people in this latest census count. They're going to divide it by the number of congressional seats we have. And then the legislature has to draw districts on a map that each contain exactly the same number of people. They draw these lines to favor one party or another, either to minimize the minority party's influence or to maximize the majority party's influence. It's a real piece of political arm wrestling that takes place every 10 years, and Texas is up for it this time. A once-in-a-decade fight that will set the stage for the midterm elections in 2022. Most of the major statewide officials are up for re-election in 2022, including the governor, and there is you know, certainly speculation that the governor could face a primary challenge from someone like Alan West, the new chair of the uh, state Republican Party, who has openly disagreed with the governor on some of his pandemic management decisions. And so how much does the potential threat of a primary challenge shape the issues that Abbott focuses on and prioritizes in the session as well? In a session that's going to be consumed by these very somber issues of a budget shortfall, redistricting, and coronavirus relief, um, you know, is there space for these more politically polarizing issues, whether it's um, further restricting abortion access or something like punishing local governments that cut police funding? I think that's what we're all waiting to see. Thank you.